Apple and out to Longmont. So that system worked pretty well for years. And then the flood hit in 2013, and unfortunately, the Alaska Avenue site was in the floodplain, and so it was washed away in the flood, along with a, quite a number of logs that sort of wandered around Longmont for a day or two. Um, and the city of Longmont was not very interested in having that facility put back in the floodplain, and neither were we. And so. Since that time, we have been trying to uh, service our facilities from our yard in Nederland, where we grind up uh, the logs up there and we truck them down uh, to the plains. And as I say, since the flood, we've been also trying to find a location on the plains that would be more um, accessible and, and require less trucking back and forth. And we've had a very hard time identifying a location that would work for us. So in any case, the, the, the property that we're talking about is a little over 2,000 feet from the open space transportation facility in Longmont, which would uh, greatly facilitate the grinding and delivery of, of the woody material to that facility, and, um, and then we could continue to also provide the same material to the jail in, in Boulder. Um, so, um, as I say, the staff supports the acquisition of the forestry yard primarily because of its location. Um, and, it, it, and it would reduce, as I say, the trucking costs and would make material easily available, which would further reduce cost and increase efficiency. So I'm here today to ask for your approval for the acquisition of the St. Vrain forestry yard as described, and also to sign the purchase agreement and the mechanics lien letter. Thank you. Thanks, Mel. Any questions? So what was the previous use of this property? I see the map of it, the area. It, it's it's a residential uh, slash agricultural property. It has a small house on it. Um, and the owner that has it now um, grew some hemp for a time and tried some other crops. Um, but she was never very successful at making any of that go. So. And before that, it was sort of the same thing. They used to grow hay there, and they lived in the house, the owners before her. So that was its usage. Thank you. Mel, this place is big enough that we could also, so we're not going to use up all the 30 acres, right? And we'll have space for additional um, woody debris storage if we need it. If something yeah, it, it could, uh, under the land use code, it could be used if we have another emergency. Um, for instance, if we have another flood and we have trees that we need to get out of the way and store them somewhere, which is, was a problem in, during the last flood, this facility could be used for that as well. Great. And with some land use approval, you could expand its use in, in the future. There's plenty of room there to do other things, but right now that's not part of what, what, what we're considering. Great. I'd move approval. Second. And just to clarify, um, do we need separate memos, uh, motions for each Please. one? Yes. So this is 23A? Or 23, uh, yeah. I'm we, sorry, we, 23. 23. I keep throwing in the A's. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And so, move approval on 24. Um, purchase agreement? Purchase agreement. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then move approval on 25. The mechanics lean letter. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Mel. Thank you. Item number 26 is a proposal to acquire 1.65 shares of the South Boulder and Coal Creek Irrigating Ditch Company and one share of the um, Frico from Wilma Spicer and David Spicer for $100,000. Is that you as well? That's me again. Thank you. Um, so I'm here today to ask your approval for the acquisition of 1.65 shares of South Boulder and Coal Creek Irrigation Ditch Water and one share of the Farmers Reservoir and Irrigation Ditch Company, commonly known as FRICO. Um, because, uh, and, and as you say, the acquisition would be for $100,000. Um, and the county staff certainly supports this, this proposed purchase. Um, the issue with this water and the issue with the southeast part of Boulder County is that you can't deliver Big Thompson water to the southeast part of Boulder County. It's not possible. 
and in most of Boulder County, that Big Thompson water provides um, so a little bit of early water, but fundamentally it provides late water in the irrigation system, in the irrigation season. And so when we're down in that southeast corner of the county, we, we struggle with late water, um, and it makes it difficult to grow certain crops. Um, it kind of limits what we can do on some of those properties like Warrenburg and, and even Rock Creek Farm to some extent, and, and there's a whole list of properties that cluster around that area. Um, they all tend to get Goodhue water, which is a ditch company, but that water, like most ditches, tends to peter out, and if you're lucky, maybe the second week of July, if you have a really good year. And so from July until September, it's pretty dry, and it makes it difficult to grow uh, certain kinds of, of crops. So the advantage to both these water rights is that they act very much like the Big Thompson water would, and that's because they both have storage rights in Marshall Lake. And Marshall Lake, as you know, is situated down in that part of the county. And you can run this water through the Goodhue system and a couple of other ditch systems. And they have, that storage is senior for both of these water rights, which means that you can get water early, but fundamentally you can, that water, like on the, the South Boulder, Coal Creek water, will run sometimes into October um, because there's sufficient storage there. So that's the rationale for, for um, the desire to acquire this water. As you know, our department has been reevaluating our water stock and trying to identify areas where we're short of water. I think they've come to you with, with, with some discussions about that issue and that that's now something we would like to make a priority moving forward and that's in the process of being uh, finally approved. But, um, so as I say, the one thing you can do with this water is you can put this water in some places later in the year, which, and that frees up some of the good hue to go other places. And so it just it reinforces our portfolio down in that part of the county. Um, as I say, it, it, you could use it on Admore Bowes, on, on Warrenburg, on Boulder County Land Ventures, on Trillium, and on Rock Creek Farm. Any questions? No, sounds good. Um, so this comes out of the open space fund money, correct? It does, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Well, it's a great part of the county, I got to say. No. It's, I know, and <laughs> <laughs> I happen to agree with you. But, um, but it does sort of dry up at the end of the year. So. Well, and that's why the commissioners have acquisition of water as one of our strategic priorities. So we, I think we're all in agreement here. Right. It was one of the first. Second. I, I may bring you. Uh, All in favor. Uh, Aye. Aye. You're doing a great job. Mel, <laughs> go forth. Thank Acquire you. water. I, I, have, I have two on the horizon I'm working on. Excellent. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right. Item number 27 is to request approval for the 2019 Economic Vitality Program grant amounts totaling 170757 Good morning. Summer Law is Commissioner's Office. So I am here to request approval of the contract amounts for the 2019 Economic Vitality Program. As you know, historically, at minimum, one entity from each of the municipalities is funded through this program, as well as organizations that fund countywide or across communities. Funding of these economic development and vitality organizations aligns with our philosophy um, communicating the Boulder County Comprehensive Plan of supporting economic economic activities in the cities and towns of Boulder County. So the funding process has been supported through a collaborative approach among both the organizations um, and Boulder County who meet regularly as part of the Boulder Regional Business Partners. So you should have a memo within the system that outlines each of these amounts. The total is $170,757 and the organizations that would be funded are the Boulder Chamber of Commerce, Boulder Independent Business Alliance, Erie Chamber, Lafayette, Tino Chamber, Longmont Economic Development Partnership, Louisville Chamber, Niwot Business Association, Small Business Development Center, Superior Chamber of Commerce, Tourism and Recreation Partnership, which is now being supported by the Net Netherland Downtown Development Authority, the town of, and the Town of Lyons. So if you have any questions, I'm available to answer. Any, any questions? No. No, move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Summer. Um, item number 28 is the 2018 Annual Highway Users Tax Fund 
report to CDOT? Howdy. I'm Dave Watson, GIS Manager in Transportation. Uh, coming here to request approval and signature of the standing annual 2018 Highway User Users Tax Fund, which we report to CDOT. Um, deadline is uh, Friday, February 1st. The um, report each year just identifies um, eligible roads that Boulder County um, is eligible for, which this year totals 632.26 miles. Um, it is a reduction from last year of 1.35 miles, primarily because of annexations by the uh, city of Longmont. And then there's other uh, updates to the data that were made as well, uh, including um, an upgraded revised method in GIS of measuring road lengths, um, identifying uh, the updated width of a couple of roads, and then we added um, the old San Fran Bridge back into the, the tax fund report this year. Great. Any questions? No. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Item number 29 is the IGA with Boulder County Housing Authority related to the acquisition of the Kaufman Street parking garage. Hello, Ian. Good morning, Commissioners. Ian Swallow. I'm uh, sitting on the Boulder County side for this item. So this is the IGA between Boulder County and Boulder County Housing Authority. Uh, for the acquisition of the 518 Kaufman parcel across from the hub. Um, this is intended to meet our site control requirements for our CHAPA application, which is due uh, Friday. And um, yeah, big thanks to the whole administrative services team, Boulder County Attorney's Office, who helped us kind of get this agreement set. Basically, it outlines um, the conditions to closing, which is the project going forward, everybody agreeing on final costs. Um, and we are very excited to be moving forward with the project. So happy to answer any questions. We're very excited as well. Indeed. Any questions? Uh, no, thanks for making the deadline. I move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to item number 30. It's, it's, um, we're now sitting as the housing authority for um, the intergovernmental agreement with Boulder County related to the same topic. Yep, Ian Swallow now on the Housing Authority side. So this is the exact same agreement just from the Housing Authority uh, role for the board. So uh, same property, same exact document, just signing as the Housing Authority board. So I like the commission's action, so I'm going to move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number 31 is the pur purchase and sale agreement with Arlet Properties for the same topic. Yep, so Ian Swallow at the Housing Authority again. So this is the agreement between Boulder County Housing Authority and Arlet Properties for what is essentially a 59-foot portion of Arlet's property in Longmont on that same 500 block of Kaufman. Um, that par parcel would go um, underneath the parking garage. They would then have access to some parking spaces in the garage um, and be looking to build a new office building down the road. Um, it's very similar to the Boulder County agreement, slightly different in a couple of places, but uh, we feel very good about it and are excited to be moving forward with Arlet Properties. Great. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And is item number 32 also you? Also me. Requesting approval for the IRS form 8328 to make the required carry forward election of unused private activity bond volume cap. Yes. So um, Ian Swallow, once again, as the housing authority, maybe a little less exciting than the previous items, but this is um, just requesting the board's approval and signature on IRS form 8328. Uh, which is carrying forward our unused private activity bond cap. We would ultimately use this for the Kaufman project, um, and this is just a required annual filing with the IRS. So happy to answer any questions. The IRS form made me jump. Uh, looking forward to what's coming up for us, but uh, I move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Ian. So I contacted the person that was supposed to show up, and I haven't heard back. And I, I believe that's Dia Wheeler. Right. Maybe we should um, hold up in the business meeting for when she sure. shows up at 11.15 for another item, and we can have her go through these then. Does that Sounds work? That's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there anything else? No, thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. So on the first reading. Yes. All right. I... I, have to, I can't do anything until Jeremy tells me I can, but... Well, I can just stand here and wait. I can be told what to do. 
just, you know, you can do whatever you want, but I have to wait. Are we going to reopen? Yeah, he does. He's giving me the knife. Welcome everyone back to the Board of County Commissioners for Boulder County's business meeting for January 29th, 2019. All three commissioners are still present and we're going back to um, do items um, 16 through 21. So we'll begin with item 16, which is legal representation agreement in Johnson v. Kellison. Thank you. Good morning. Apologies for not being here earlier. Uh, I had three things on and one went so, off. Quite all right. Anyway. But Dia introduce Wheeler. yourself. <laughs> Dia Wheeler from the County Attorney's Office, representing the Sheriff's Office. Um, what I have to present today and ask for approval and signature on is legal representation agreements in three separate cases. Um, in the case of Johnson v. Kellison, there are three, um, two sergeants and one um, commander from the jail that are individually named. Christopher Reese, Eugene Martinez, and Carmen Coger are all named in that case. Um, we have sought approval in the past for representation from um, the commissioners, and that was approved, so we just need to have the approval and signature of the legal representation agreements in that case. <clears throat> so that's that case. Did you want to? Questions for Dia? No. The... Um so that we've got it listed out. Do you can can you see our list? Yes. So is it? Am I just motioning the first one or multiple ones from what you just said? Um, you would be doing the first one. Just the first 16, one. Sixteen. Right. Okay. I'd make a motion to approve number sixteen and the discussion items, case number eighteen CV two one one two. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So then we'll move on to item 17, which is legal representation agreement for Hammond versus Coger, case number 18, CV 577. Okay. And it looks like, it looks like these are all in different orders. So what I will do, I think, for, for clarification, I'll ask that, the, that you approve 16 through 21, and I'll explain those all in detail. It looks like two of the defendants from Johnson got pushed down that's and what, out of order. That's, yeah. That's so um, so let me tell you about um, Hammond. Hammond is two separate cases. Um, same plaintiff. So he's filed two separate actions in federal district court against um, different defendants. Matthew Morostica, which is number 18. Uh, UG, sorry. David Nagel, which is number 20. And... that appears on um, Carmen Coger in number 17. So I would be asking for approval of the legal representations of that case, those two cases, which were approved for representation by your honors previously, but we did need that legal representation signature approval. So that's 17 and 18? That's, it looks like 17, or actually there's 17 there's 20. 20 commissioners if I may I think it might be easier if Dia just explains the two different cases and then you just go walk down um, item by item and do the approvals just That's because that works great. best in our yes. system okay, okay. Yeah. great so um, basically uh, I've already talked about Johnson the other two cases are the Hammond case they are they were filed separately um, that's a little bit abnormal. Typically, the court would combine them, but the court didn't in this case. Um, and those are just uh, against David Nagel in one case, against Carmen Coger in another, and Matthew Morostica in the same case as Carmen Coger. Okay. Well, that'll get us through 20, right? Because then we'll still have Christopher Reese at the bottom. Of, that's another case. Christopher Reese was the Johnson case that I explained oh. earlier. Okay. okay. So there's just two. Okay. We've got the explanation. Are there any questions for either case? No. So then we could do a, a motion. All the rest of them. Well, actually, you want separate motions. Yeah, we'll We've do already done 16. Ones. We'll go to 17. Okay. I'd make a motion to approve number 17, 
Legal Representation Agreement for Hammond versus Coger et al. Case number 18 CV 577. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to approve number 18 Legal Representation Agreement Morastica Matthew in Hammond versus Coger et al. Case number 18 CV 577. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to approve number 19 Legal Representation Agreement Martinez, Eugene, and Johnson versus Kellison at all, case number 18, CV 2112. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to approve number 20, legal representation agreement, Nagel, David, and Hammond versus Nagel at all, case number 18, CV 579. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You're doing great. One more. <laughs> Make a motion to approve number 21, legal representation agreement, Reese, Christopher, and Johnson versus Kellerson, et al., case number 18, CV 2112. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. With that, we will close our business meeting. And I will uh, reopen. This is the Boulder County Board of County Commissioners on um, January 29th, 2019. All three commissioners are present, and we are here for a public hearing on Ordinance 2019-01, an ordinance repealing Ordinance Number 2012-6, and amending and reenacting these rules and regulations governing anim animal control. Thank you, D.F. Wheeler, appearing on behalf of the County Attorney's Office for the animal control section of the sheriff's office, um, who is putting this new ordinance before you for approval on first reading. Um, under the statutes 3015, 406, and 407, there are two readings required. This is the first of those. Um, so we are um, here to request that you approve the process moving forward um, to see if you have any other questions about the ordinance itself. Sarah Spencieri, who is the supervisor of the animal control unit for the sheriff's office, is here and, um, and actually noted most of the updates that needed to happen to comply with the law. So if you have questions, she's here to answer them. Um, after this hearing, just for your information, what will be required is that we will publish the ordinance in full and the paper will reset uh, for the second hearing. And at that point, we will ask that the ordinance be adopted. Um, I did have a couple of things I needed to amend by interlineation, and we will um, submit this so that you can see what the changes were. It looks like the um, after the whereas, um, the language that uh, the now therefore it be ordained, which is statutorily required, was written, it was mistakenly written as resolved, so we've amended that. And then we've added the clerk and recorder certification onto the back, which wasn't there before. So those, those are the only two changes since you guys have had a chance to review it. Um, and then if you have any other questions, I'm here and so is Ms. Spencieri. Thank you. Questions? I, I had one. Um, the, um, as you read through there, it mentions periodically ferrets. And um, I think our intention soon is to introduce black-footed ferrets on some of our open space. And um, so I wanted to make sure that it wouldn't apply to those ferrets. Good morning. I'm Sarah Spencieri, the Animal Control Supervisor. Um, so no, it would not be for wild animals. This is strictly for domestic animals. Um, and the way the CRS Colorado Revised Statute reads, um, it's for dogs, cats, other domestic mammals, and other pet animals. Um, and we just wanted to narrow that down to ferrets specifically, um, and that's for communicable disease purposes, for rabies specifically. Um, but it's just for domestic ones that live inside a house. Okay. I was yes, pretty sir. sure that was the case. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Questions? Yeah, could you just give us a two-minute summary about why you're doing this? Yes, sir. Um, so initially, we wanted to change um, section five, which is the, you guys have you don't have a copy of this yet. Yeah, you do. Okay. Um, so section five is the barking dog section. 
We don't have the red line copy. Ours was all. Ours was, yeah. So we couldn't see what was new. Oh, apologize for that. We can definitely get you one of these. Um, so I've been with Animal Control for 15 years, and we've been using this and thought it was time for a change to adequately address technology. Um, that being said, what we did was we added a sentence um, under paragraph D number one that says a complainant from a single household with adequate documentation of the violation, including audio and or video recordings. Uh, frequently people will just go out and shoot a video with their iPhone or whatnot and then send it to us and that hadn't previously been addressed in the ordinance. So we wanted to make sure that that was available for the public to do. Um, we have a way of documenting that in our evidence section, so it's permanently recorded. So we wanted to make sure that was available to people. Um, the other change we made was we took out, no, we modified the warnings for Barking Dog. So how it had been in the past was when somebody calls us to complain, we give what we call a courtesy notice saying, hey, so-and-so complained about your dog barking on this day at this time. And then, according to the ordinance, we had to give another warning. So we had to do a courtesy warning and then a three-day notice saying you have 72 hours to fix the problem, and then we write a summons. Um, and that seemed kind of redundant. So we thought one warning is usually sufficient. Um, and if you look at our numbers for 2017, we gave 94 barking dog courtesy notices and only two summonses. So it has really been effective doing that initial courtesy warning. So we figure why do extra paperwork and just narrow it down a little bit. Just to clarify, the 94 warnings were all first time courtesy warnings, yes, not the second time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you didn't, so only in two cases did you have to do the second warning? Yes, ma'am. Nice. We find that education is far better than just writing tickets sure. and going out and having a conversation with them to find out why the you know dog is barking or what's happening in the home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are the major changes. Yes, ma'am. Otherwise, there's just some grammatical things um, and some changes for um, the Colorado Revised Statute. So we just updated that language, um, and then also the Americans with Disability Act. The language got amended, so we fixed that in our ordinance as well. Okay. All right. Yes. So, um, so we need a motion to approve the first reading. Is that correct? Or is, is, is this public hearing? Oh, yes, it is. Thank you. So we'll open it up for public hearing to see if anybody in the audience would like to speak to us on this matter. No takers. <laughs> So we will close the public hearing and return the matter to the board. I'd move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Okay.